walking into my local Walmart in Bend, Oregon, and we're gonna go through their assortment of kayaks. Unfortunately, this is pretty much your best knowledgeable sales agent when you go to a Walmart. So I'm gonna share my knowledge and tell you what I think of some of their boats. Pretty much everything's strapped to the outside. And uh, the first thing that I see when I come here is like, wow, all these boats are being aged. Um, maybe the plastic, most of the plastics do have UV stabilizers, but I'm thinking about like the straps or the neoprene here. You can see a lot of dirt and grime on it. So it's just kind of one downside of buying some of the boats that Walmart has on display is that they might have been outside, hot, cold, lots of sun for months at a time. Something to think about, particularly as it relates to the componentry. So we actually have a pretty good selection of boats here. Lifetime has uh, kayaks from Pelican, which is a French Canadian company. They actually now own Confluence Water Sports with this Perception and Wilderness. And then they have the Pelican branded boats, which are kind of the price point. Um, we have Lifetime products. They are made in the USA. They have facilities in Salt Lake City or just north of it and in Tennessee. Um, and then we also have down here at the end, we actually have some Ozark Trail branded products. It looks like they're Sun Dolphin makes and, uh, or possibly the mold came from there. So we'll go look at those in a second. Just from a feature standpoint, the boat that I'm kind of most excited about here is this Yukon from Lifetime, the Yukon Angler. It's got two rod holders in the back. You even have securing tie downs here for your gear. You have paddle holders off to either side. It does come with a really comfortable frame seat. You have track mounts on either side. You can put cup holders, rod holders, GPS, a pretty sophisticated foot adjustment system where you can just pull toward you and it moves forward and tight. You even have some deck mounting surfaces there. It comes with a camera mount up front. It's actually a fair amount of features in this boat and I've paddled the hull and it paddles pretty darn well. I believe it's at 11 foot six. Uh, so it's going to have plenty of capacity. They list 350 pounds and these hulls have a warranty for five years. Walmart rolls back the prices, but in order to roll back the prices, sometimes you roll back the features. So what you don't necessarily see here is Lifetime makes some nicer products that they pad this part of the seat. They even put a neoprene seat pad here. You're not gonna get any of that, but there are ways to get around it. They actually sell a little foam seat pad for stadiums seating that you could even put right here, and at least that would give you some comfort on your butt. And usually if you have a good PFD, you can get padding out of that or you could also figure out some way to also pad on top. Um, one thing that you have to be aware of with Lifetime is they do this quick release, which is kind of nice, but it also requires you to be a little bit more careful with it. The nice part is something breaks, you can just call Lifetime and they can send you more, but the downside in transport is you have to be a little bit more careful to make sure everything's secured. The hatches on these boats are pretty darn basic. I mean, this hatch, is going to come off pretty darn easily um, so you know it's not something you're going to be rough and tumble with but you do have access to the entire inside of the hull here the foot braces there's not a whole lot of bite on this foot brace it's pretty small off to the side one part is good that your ankle the ball of your ankle doesn't hit here but you just don't have a lot to grab onto but again recreational model comes with some real basic uh, tank well bungees. These can be even pulled off and removed and replaced. Um, but, you know, again, it's a pretty raised tank well. There's not a whole lot that's going to go back there. But a day floating down the gentle river here in town, this thing would be perfect. All right, jumping over here to this charger model. I have uh, saw a bunch of these go out last year. One thing I've noticed is it's actually a pretty shallow boat. So I think before loading it on your car, you want to make sure that you actually your thighs fit in it. Another place that Walmart offers some savings, but it also does short you a little bit in performance. And this is the foot braces aren't adjustable foot braces, but they're just kind of a glued in or actually riveted in just foot track. And you have your feet have to fit on one of these. These aren't going to be as grippy. They kind of angle away a little bit. So it's definitely a bit of performance at the savings of cost. The seat pad, this neoprene is another place where Lifetime and Walmart are saving. It's pretty darn basic. One neat thing though, if you ever were to have a break, they do make their seat backrest removable so you could quickly replace. And that's actually kind of nice, but again, it's something that you're gonna to wanna to pay a little bit of attention to when car topping. The paddle included, this Lifetime Elite paddle is a pretty basic riveted blade, aluminum shafted paddle. It's going to work, but it's not going to be something that you're necessarily going to want to cover miles with. The only other thing that I like to point out to people, especially if you have kids or guests using these boats, 
is that another savings thing here is that this is pretty darn sharp. It's the way that these boats are made, which is called blow molding. You can't necessarily get real rounded. So this is shaved out with a kind of robotic arm. If it were my boat, you could add a little extra padding on here. There's actually some products called trim lock that you can actually find and put around here or even just kind of take the sharp spots out. But you just want to be careful getting out in and out of this. And you know, if you're wearing shorts, that's something that you might end up hitting your shins on. I mean, $245 though, you know, when I got into this industry, an entry level kayak like this was probably $500 in the 90s. So, I mean, it, prices really come down. These are still made stateside. They're blow molded. They can make hundreds of these a day. So it's really done through an efficiency thing. And in the end, the savings are kind of passed on to you. But you do want to be aware of when you are saving money, some of the features that you end up missing. Okay, so lifetimes are blow molded and kind of think of like, if you can look up blow molding online, it's kind of how a pop bottle is made where a tube of plastic comes down and then the mold closes over top of it. Pelican over here, these are called twin sheet forming and they actually are fusing a deck and a hull together. So they have a flat piece of plastic and it's being pressed over a mold, both the deck and the hull and they're being fused together. So a little bit of different technology, similar materials. They are both polyethylene. They call their material Ram-X, um, and as we look at this boat, again, pretty basic seat. It's not a real high seat back, pretty basic seat pad. Again, they rivet in their, their straps, so if you ever had to replace, you're going to be drilling out rivets. It's a very simple deck profile, very just not a whole lot of contours to it. Um, but you do have an adjustable foot brace, so that's kind of nice for a little bit more options. The tank well is a little bit deeper. And I think this would be a great boat for around the lake home, um, kids, family, friends using. Just a nice little simple design. It does have the drain plug down low if you do have water, which could come in through some of the eyelets here and through the handles. Uh, the handle's in a good location that you're not going to pinch your hand picking it up. Um, you know, you have to be a little careful when you paddle. Some people that take their stroke long might rub their hand along this, but not too big of a deal. Uh, Muskegon KL Outdoors. Okay, so this is KL Outdoors used to be Sun Dolphin. They ended up um, right at the beginning of the pandemic going out of business, and I think they've resurfaced. And what we're looking at here now is made by KL Outdoors in Michigan, so US made, but it's an Ozark Trail. So it's basically a private branded Walmart model under their in-house brand name for sporting goods and outdoor gear. You're looking at a sit on, sit inside here. I think the first thing I call out is there's a lot of volume around the combing and then it tapers very quickly. So you're gonna wanna really remain centered over your boat. If you lean back a lot when you paddle, you're gonna lose a lot of stability. In fact, you can look right here. If you're leaning back, now you're only over this wide spot. Does come with two rod holders. This hatch here is a little bit of a deception. It's kind of a little trick of the industry. As you go, oh, it's got a hatch, awesome. So you, you kind of perceive this as a lot of value, but it's really just formed into the boat. I mean, anything you put there, if water gets in, it's gonna get wet. But yeah, I could put a little five, 10 liter dry bag in there but I could also put that between my legs and actually have access. It does come with a rod holder. This looks like it's just thrown in, so make sure if you get one of these that you do get that. Uh, so it, the hatch does give it a nice look, but as far as value to me, uh, I don't find that a huge value. I'd actually rather have access behind the seat, which you cannot do here. So that's something to point out. I can't get any gear back in here. If I have sticks or rocks or anything fall behind this seat, I got to snake it out through the side here. So that's something to think about. There's your rod holder attachment point. There's a little water bottle holder. And again, one of the downsides of keeping boats at Walmart outside is already the adhesive has come off here. It's really hard, everybody, to stick anything to polyethylene. The best adhesives in the world come in polyethylene tubes <laughs> or plastic tubes. So, you know, these are basically, if you get home with these still stuck, I'd consider yourself lucky a hot day or uh, they're going to come undone. So uh, it, that, it is one way that they're trying to attack this sharper point like I showed you in the other models, um, but this is not going to stay for long. Okay, so now we got the Ozark Trail sit on top. So again, made up in Michigan. This little screw hatch, I mean, the best thing for this bit here normally would be to get access to install some sort of things, fishing. 
but it looks like you can't. This is just going into a plastic. So it's just basically something you could put, uh, I don't know, cup coming out of it. It does come with scupper uh, plugs, which is kind of nice to keep water from coming through the scupper holes, which are under your seat right here. Uh, again, the backrest is pretty basic and low. They have a cool little quick stash. You maybe you could slide your phone if it's waterproof there. Again, these are stick-on pads. I wouldn't trust them for the long term. Um, you can already see one's peeling off here. A quick little water bottle holder, a little tray. These are pretty basic foot braces. One thing you have to be a little bit more careful with some of these, and these ones look okay, is they do have a stop, so you don't, oh, but I can get it off. So you can lose these pedals that are on tracks like this. This one's going to be a little harder, but it's something to think about. It does have a paddle holder. One thing you want to call out on these paddle holders at Walmart on a lot of the price point boats is they are not uh, mounting this. They're just drilling a hole and tiling a knot. So not only can you get water in here, but if you ever had to replace this, it's probably a little metal. Actually, it's not a knot. It's probably a little metal clasp that goes in and turns sideways. It's hard to get out. So if this were to ever break, those metals could fall in and go into your boat and then you got to somehow try to snake them out. So you go, well, we could get it out of this hatch. We could go in there. Well, again, this is not a true access to the hull. This is your scupper tank, basically formed down in the plastic. And then they give you this little added plastic box, which to me, again, I'd rather just have a dry bag. I don't really see the benefit to this other than it looks cool when you're shopping at Walmart. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, you're seeing the difficulty here of me trying to figure this out. Um, I don't necessarily understand why this exists, but this maybe could be used as a snow sled. I don't know. <laughs> right? That's weird. <laughs> so weird. Yeah. This little plastic extra piece that goes into the tank well, and then you have a screw access hatch. For me, I would take that home and get rid of it. I'd have a dry bag. That's something I can reach behind me, pull into my lap, get into, close it back up. Easier to carry up and down the beach. So this thing looks pretty cool, but from a functional standpoint, it's kind of getting a nah from me. Okay, the kids kayak, you guys, these are wildly popular. And I see people making fun of this kind of boat, but you know what? It's getting young people out in the water away from their screens. This is the Bali 6 from Sun Dolphin. Uh, also, they carry Lifetime's Wave usually. They're a six foot sit on top kayak. I like to think of probably about an eight or seven year old and under. Once you get in that nine, 10 year old, I'd be looking more towards something like the Daylight here from Lifetime. This is an eight foot sit on top, I believe. Pretty basic, comes with a paddle, or possibly looking at this little pacer, an eight foot sit on top, or sit inside um, with paddle. So again, the going with those six foot kids boats, I'm gonna think about probably seven, eight years old and under. Last year they did not have a lot of paddles. This year it looks like they've got their suggestions. So Ozark Trail, what is this? This is their in-house brand of paddles. These are gonna be over uh, imported from overseas. The first thing when you're handling paddles out in a Walmart is be careful because these racks tend to drop paddles. All right, we're looking at their first paddle here. This is black, uh, black paddle, uh, aluminum shaft. These are $22, so this is their price point. Here's what you have to be concerned about with a paddle like this. It's actually a pretty good connection, but more expensive paddles are gonna have nylon ferrules here. And if I were to happen to drop this out of the back of the truck and it were to hit the ground like this, just a little dent's gonna really hurt trying to get it back together. So this is just kind of like your basic tent pole. When you go with an aluminum paddle here, uh, this entry level paddle, you're gonna notice that the ferrule connection's got a little bit more play on it. One of the things that really makes this a more basic price point paddle is that they're riveting in the blades. Nicer paddles are going to be press fitted with an adhesive and this rivet over time can become a little bit loose or it could also be a, a leak point. You can notice here in fact that I can actually get my finger inside the shaft there. As we look to the blade itself, it's got a pretty good stiffness, but just the way that I feel this injection, it may be too stiff. So if this were to get stuck in between rocks, I suspect this isn't gonna flex very well and you might have some breakage. But 22 bucks, certainly the price point paddle. These are 220 centimeters long. 
Uh, it looks like that's what they have everything here. So I use a 220 centimeter paddle with my touring kayaks. So if you're getting a wider tandem, this paddle is going to be a little bit short. You want to be on a 230 or a 240. Uh, sit on top that's a little bit wider. They have some fishing ones from Lifetime up front. You're probably going to want a 230 or 240. So this 220 is going to be a little bit short for that. All right, so now we're jumping up to their $36 paddle. Of course, merchandising is not necessarily Walmart's main thing here. But cool thing here is they have an adjustable length paddle. Looks like with a feather lock type of feature, you'll want to tighten up the screws right here so that it doesn't move on you. Right now it's moving, uh, so that'll have to be tightened up. This thing goes between a 220 and a 230 centimeter paddle. So this is going to again work for sit and sides, um, sit on top, single wrecks, but in a tandem or a boat that you might have a frame chair, you're probably going to want to still be a little longer at a 240. Uh, it's an anodized aluminum, so they cover the aluminum up in black. They give it some rubberized X grips. Looks like they copied bending branches on that move. Uh, so <clears throat> for the blade itself, another injection molded blade. <clears throat> kind of just got this little cut out here to make it look a little sportier, fishier. Um, there's a little bit more flex in this blade. It does have a hook retrieval here. Um, overall, not as bad. And if you notice, you spend a little bit more money. They've now put a rubber gasket over it. I don't feel a rivet in there, so this may be a glued in blade. And at $52, this Ozark Trail Paddle's got a little bit of color to it. This looks like it's more of a thermal form blade, so a harder plastic. Uh, probably has a little bit more of uh, snap to it on the water. And this is a fiberglass shaft. At $52, pretty good value. Um, as we, we look, reason you're also going to have a fiberglass inner ferrule and a fiberglass shaft. So over time, these are going to age well together. And usually going with a composite ferrule like this over a nylon ferrule, it's a bit stronger when you're getting in and out of your boat and putting pressure on your paddle as you're using it to stabilize yourself. Not too much play, but certainly more play than some nicer paddles uh, that are all available on the market. This isn't a 220 centimeter. It looks like most of them are. I see a little bit longer one in the back. Um, so again, you'll want to be using this for sitting sides, narrower sit on tops, but probably not a tandem or a boat where you're in a frame chair. All right, we've got uh, a 200, is it 264 or 209? I this don't know. 264 convertible stand-up paddle board. I mean, this is basically, we're seeing so much on the market right now as everybody leaned into this. It has everything you need all included. It can either be a kayak paddle or a stand-up paddle. 10 foot, 33 inches wide. So it's a little bit on the shorter side, most paddle boards, especially with that up curve. Um, but 33 is gonna give some uh, overall stability added, even though it is a shorter boat board. Uh, I think the big thing to think about here. There's a weight thing down there. Oh, okay, 287 pounds. I think you'd have a hard time seeing a 287 pound paddler standing up on this board. It's going to probably do a little bit better for people under 215 for stand up, but you can always use it as a sit on top. I mean, really, this category of paddle board is really a glorified beach toy or inner tube. You're not going to go very far in something like this, but if you're just going up to the lake and you want to play around, the kids are going to jump on and off of it and just use, it might be a good choice. Going to have some paddle gear here, huh? Reflective wraps. This is hiding out. Cool. Well, they actually have a line of accessories. They're even selling you handles. <laughs> and uh, look at that whistle with a lanyard. So that's pretty cool. Phone case. Great. You've got your basic Ozark Trail uh, foam block kit, which actually looks like it's coming with two cam straps in line for balanced stern. So that's pretty cool. That's legit. Oh, they got the kettle corn. Sweet and salty. Walmart shopping. If you're looking for deals, you're eating kettle corn.